Hi, folks. So happy to see you back here with us. It's Carol Ann and Anne Marie. And you know, Anne Marie is the guru of success. That's what I like to call her. <laughs> Don't forget, check it out. I have it in the link, as always, Anne Marie's book. And um, um, I'll have her website, her email address. If you want to reach out to her, what self made millionaires do that most people don't. And don't forget, email Anne Marie. She loves hearing from folks, right, Anne Marie? Absolutely. So please, by all means, email her if you have any questions at all. But today we are on our last series, right, Anne Marie, which is series 10. Yes. And it's been a wonderful, exciting, thrilling adventure. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. For all of the goodies that you've given everyone week after week after week, you've given us your time, your expertise, your knowledge, and I really hope and pray that folks give it a good listen and take all of what Anne Marie has to say with a very, very deep heart because all of this stuff in her book will help you create your own success. That's a guarantee. Now, um, we're going to be introducing an author and a coach after Anne Marie give up a, a, a last uh, group of habits from her book. And we're very excited that he joined us today. So please stay tuned because when Anne Marie is done talking about her habits, we are going to show you the clip, the interview that both Anne Marie and I did with Michael, Coach Michael Taylor. And it will give you chills. I promise you that. Okay, Anne Marie. Um, let's face it. People want to make money. People want to be financially successful. What advice do you have for those of us that are looking to tighten our finances, maybe um, reduce our debt, just find some way to dig out of financial crisis? For the folks out there that are struggling, what advice do you have when it comes to money and finances? Well, there are several things. Number one, you have to have self-respect in order to respect others, in order to respect money. That's number one. Number two, appreciate what you do have rather than worrying about what you don't have. Be grateful. This is one of the 52 secrets for creating your own success. Number three, a saying that I want to make sure each of our listeners, viewers, remember. It's a Swedish proverb, and it is, he who buys what is not needed is stealing from himself or herself. So my point is, think before you buy. If you need it, absolutely. If you choose to have it, that's fine. Plan for it. This is essential. Now, I want to make sure that this last YouTube video cast for what self made millionaires do is something very practical for our listeners, for our viewers. And what I want to do is to give you, give them several ways, ideas for putting cash into their pocket now. No, don't go to the casino. If you do, <laughs> that's your fun money. No, 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 no. Okay. What I want you to do is this. Think of small ways for putting money into your pocket. So that means you go, you're ready to buy something. You are now beginning to pre-plan your purchases. So the $30, $50, $100 that you would spend, take that, pretend you spent it, and put it in a savings. Pretend you spent it. That's number one. Look for low-hanging fruit. A 401k is the lowest hanging fruit you could possibly find. When your employer matches what you put in your 401k by 2%, 5%, are you kidding me? That is free money. Yes. That is putting cash into your pocket. Maximize what you're doing, and I'll give you a perfect one. Use your AAA discount. Everything I buy is bought through top cash dot com you go to tapcash.com and then you go to the marriott you go to whatever the case and 
you it can be macy's it can be Coles, it can be target sometimes it's even whole foods mm -hmm. and you actually get back into your checking account once a quarter two percent five percent seven percent ten percent it's ridiculous not to do it this is putting instant cash in your pocket by not changing anything simply being savvy mm -hmm. another way and we talked about that you know if you have a home and you don't use it all the time you have a second home list it with airbnb that's essential get rid of what you don't want or need by selling it on craigslist you know what five dollars equals a day you end up with how much a year the question is what don't you need besides becoming a minimalist you are generating revenue by putting cash into your pocket mm -hmm. many people drive uber drive lyft drive sidecar what a great way to generate additional revenue this may not be for everyone however i know a lot of ambitious individuals who take 10 extra hours a week 30 extra hours a week this is important and one of the last things my son is doing this he earns his he has his real estate license this is equivalent to a, a fifty thousand dollar bonus that he pays himself a year and so my point is there are many ways to put cash into your pocket there is no moaning groaning that you haven't gotten a raise make it happen create your own success i love in your book how you you talk about the four advantages of living below your means absolutely that's there are great. Thank you. And there are many ways to live below your means. I don't mean you that you have to uh, scrimp. That's not the case. The key is figure out, you don't have to live. Some many millionaires live below their means. Mm -hmm. They're not frugal. They simply realize they don't have to go all out. Because they can buy something doesn't mean that they will. They reprioritize. And they spend a lot of time giving back, both their time, their energy, and their money. So this is important. Now, I must say, towards the end of your book, you go through in depth some really awesome financial advice, things that a lot of folks, you know, may not think about. You, you, you cover like financial planning strategies and how to control your financial destiny. So this is really something that you have to read and reread. It's really in depth and very informative, Anne Marie. Well, thank you. And this is from an individual who is a financial, who still is a financial advisor. Little by little, you go far. That's what each of these people have done. I made sure I did not interview trust fund babies. I interviewed people who came from nothing, who created their own success, uh, just as Michael Taylor, who our listeners and viewers will hear and see, they made, created every penny. They are entrepreneurs, as are approximately 75% of the uh, individuals of self made millionaires. So with that said, what I want to say is we have spent many, many weeks assisting viewers in knowing what it takes to be successful. We mm -hmm. have given them the rod. My wish for each of them is to now begin fishing. That's what this is about. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to you picking up a book of what self-made millionaires do. I hear from people several times a day, domestically and internationally. And I have to tell you, it has assisted them because they have a very simple roadmap. Whether it takes two years, five years, 15 years, 20 years, who cares? You are moving forward. And so I charge you with joining me on this journey and we will do it together. Thank you. That's brilliant, Anne Marie. Thank you. And and again, I can't stress enough that this is not only about your financial wealth, which is a great roadmap for, but it's also for your personal wealth too. How to really learn how to be treated with respect and treat other people with respect, how to pay it forward, and so much more. So Anne Marie, thank you so much for giving your time, like I said, your knowledge and paying it forward to everybody with your awesome habits. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. My pleasure, and thank you for being the vehicle to bring all of us together, Carol Ann. I'm honored. It's been my pleasure. And folks, please don't forget, you can email Anne-Marie anytime. Check out her website. She has authored 10 books. She has a very exciting launch 
that already took place, right, Anne Marie? What's your new book called? Everybody has a book in them. How to bring it out, and, and it wonderful. is it is giving people the motivation to create their own success. One of the ways to be able to create your own success is once again to create an additional source of revenue, and an additional source of revenue is to take your experiences and build it in the form of a book. Some people are still writing their story. Others already have enough experiences to document them in the form of a book. And so my goal is to assist others in making their whatever it is, it happen. And I have to thank you because after I read that book, I finally became motivated myself to start writing a book. And it's something that I always wanted to do. I know it's part of my, my life's journey to bring that book out. And your book really helped me do that. So thank, thank you. you so much for that. It was a blessing to have met you and to become your friend, Anne Marie. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you again. And we will not say goodbye. We will say until the next time, Caroline. Absolutely. So um, we have Michael Taylor with us, Coach Michael Taylor with us again. And if you watched um, my other YouTube interview that I did with Michael, it was so inspiring, so motivational. And I highly recommend that you definitely watch it if you have not. But today we're super excited because Anne Marie and I, as part of our YouTube series, Creating Your Own Success, are bringing Michael in because his story is so compelling and so motivating and so inspiring. And we want you, the, the listener, the reader, the watcher, to see living proof of a absolute success story. And again, this is not only about wealth, right, Anne Marie? This is Absolutely. about health, this is about health, um, your love life, your success, your your you know, your financial situation. Anything else, Anne Marie, that you want to add to that or Simply creating your own success, living life the way you intend it to be. So tell up to us, Michael. Yes, Michael, please do. Well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to say it this way. There are basically four pillars to a joy-filled life, okay? There's inner peace, dynamic health, great relationships, and financial abundance. When you can balance those four things in your life, then I say you can live an extraordinary one. The challenge is we live in a society that's tried to condition us to believe that it's a quick, easy fix. Everybody wants instant gratification. Everybody wants to, you know, read one book and think their life's going to change. Well, it doesn't work that way. And so there's a wonderful line in the movie, <clears throat> City Slickers, where this, there's these, these cowboys or these city people go to this a ranch. And they're, you know, they're very well-to-do, affluent people. And they go to this ranch to kind of deal with all their problems. And, and the, the guy at the ranch says this. He says, you city slickers are all alike. You spend 50 weeks a year getting your life all tied up in knots, and you think you can untie them in two. <laughs> and I, I, I love that saying. That's brilliant. That, that's what life is about. It's a process. So we have to disengage from this idea of the quick fix. And so just real quickly, I'll just give you a little backstory. You know, I was born in the inner city projects of Corpus Christi, Texas, to a single mom with six kids. And we were basically the poster children for poverty back in the 60s. When I was in the 11th grade, I decided to drop out of school because I went to a seminar and I convinced myself that I could get rich selling vacuum cleaners. And it was a very poor choice. But fortunately for me, I landed a job with a building supply center. I worked extremely hard. I climbed the corporate ladder, became the youngest manager in the history of this company. At the age of 23, I was living the American dream. I had the house, the wife, the 2.5 kids and all of that. And by society standards, I was pretty successful. And within about a six year time frame, that dream turned into a nightmare as I went through divorce, bankruptcy, a foreclosure, a deep state of depression. I was homeless for two years living out of a car. But as a result of all those challenges, I simply made a choice. And that choice was I was going to succeed. I was going to figure out how to rebuild my life. And the way that it started is I received a miracle. I was sitting up late one night because I was too depressed to sleep. 
And I was looking across the room at my bookshelf and I happened to notice that every book on my bookshelf has something to do with making money and getting rich. And as I looked at those books, this question just popped in my head. Michael, what if you took all the energy and effort you've used in trying to get rich and simply figure out how to be happy? Wow. And that one question literally changed my life in an instant. Something in me shifted and I knew intuitively that I was going to be able to rebuild my life. And so that question propelled me on what I'll call my journey of transformation. And this has been a journey that 25 years later, I'm still on this amazing journey, but I was able to rebuild my life. And I decided that I wanted to share the lessons that I learned with others to support them in overcoming the adversities in their lives. And that's why I wrote Adversity is Your Greatest Ally, How to Use Life Challenges as Stepping Stones to Live the Life of Your Dreams. Now, you recently wrote another book, correct, Michael? Yes. My latest book is called The New Face of Entrepreneurship, <laughs> An Entrepreneur's Guide to Joy, Passion, and Profits in Business. And my tagline is empowering entrepreneurs to build companies that change the world. Oh, brilliant. Wonderful. Congratulations. When did it come out? I'd love to support it. It came out in January. Okay, terrific. We have to grab a copy of that. We have to grab a copy and do a uh, review. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, Michael, I'd love to do, uh, you know, another interview with you on that book. It sounds really fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting because I take a different approach because I believe that an entrepreneur, there's three types of compensation. There's financial compensation, emotional mm -hmm. compensation, and spiritual compensation. And where a lot of entrepreneurs get tripped up is they focus only on the financial compensation. Mm -hmm. they, You're right. they, they don't understand the importance of the emotional and the spiritual. And the spiritual compensation is the result of having a purpose, recognizing that you are connected to something greater than yourself. And when you can have that connection, it'll guide you to do whatever the, the universe wants you to do. So, Michael, I know you didn't read Anne Marie's book, but that's one of the reasons why I love this book because Anne Marie takes a Thank you. Very you're welcome, dear. It's true. Anne Marie takes a very practical approach and a no nonsense approach to creating success. And she said exactly really what you did is that it's not, you know, there's no secret. There's no key somewhere that you're going to unlock this door. You have to gradually get there just like you did, Michael. So during your journey, um, did you find that you went through like yearly struggles with different types of character building, like revelations, like what, what was the first thing you did when you had that epiphany? What was the first thing you did after that epiphany? Well, the thing that changed my life the most was I, I did a workshop with a guy named John Bradshaw, who is unfortunately no longer with us. And he had a workshop called Healing the Inner Child. Mm -hmm. And in this workshop, I learned, number one, what had been driving my success, which was a deep sense of shame. I was actually driven wow. by shame. Really? And so when I went through this workshop, I was able to uncover some of these unhealed emotional traumas that I needed to deal with. And in dealing with those things, that's what laid the foundation for me to become happy. Because once I moved past the and, and took off the mask, because I was wearing these superficial masks that I hid behind. Once I took off those masks, what I came to understand is I was blessed with certain gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. one, being, one being writing, the other being speaking. And so in doing that inner work, that inner healing work, I uncovered my divine gifts. And now my purpose is to share those gifts with the world. And so I write and I speak. And that's, that's paying it forward, right, Anne-Marie? And that's, that's paying it forward. You're yeah. sharing what you have with others, and they, in turn, have the ripple effect by doing it and sharing it. That's really beautiful, without question. That's a wow. So how many people's lives have you changed as a result of speaking, of writing? I'm sure you hear from people all the time, Michael. Well, I wish I could put a number on it. I, I think the last time I, last time I checked, you know, I had over a hundred thousand downloads on my one of my podcasts alone. That's wonderful! Uh, Congratulations, which is, which is great in four or five different countries around the world, which is pretty amazing. That's beautiful. Um, and my goal is my my goal is to be a billionaire, 
And a billionaire, in my definition, is someone who positively impacts the lives of a billion people. Oh, Isn't beautiful. that awesome? I love that's, it. That's, that's my definition of a billionaire. So before I leave this earth, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to positively impact the lives of a billion people. That gave me chills, Michael. That's beautiful. And you are pretty, you're getting close. I see that already. Absolutely. That's well, it's, so it's, it's been a, It's been a 25 year journey, so. <laughs> I hear you, I understand. So what do you do to stay motivated, Michael? Well, for me, motivation is this, comes from my belief and connection to that which is greater than myself. Uh -huh. And so I am driven by a sense of purpose. I am driven by a sense that the universe as I understand it, is expressing itself through me as me. And what keeps me motivated is recognizing that I have a responsibility to share my gifts and talents with the world. And when I do that, once again, I receive the spiritual compensation and that's what drives me. So when I give a presentation and someone comes up to me and says, man, you know, I really got a lot out of that talk. You really helped me, you know, that fulfills me. That yeah, gives absolutely. me purpose and meaning. And right. so that's what drives me, that feeling I get when I know I've positively impacted someone else's life. Which is absolutely, without question, the case. Where are you based, Michael? Houston, Texas. Okay, Houston, very, very nice. I'll tell you, uh, so what do you do to continue to receive? You're gratified when people, I mean, that's a great form of receiving. Uh, in addition to reaching a billion people, uh, your definition of billionaire, uh, what dirty doubts do you have and how do you dispel them? <laughs> well, as I mentioned, my, my journey began when I started doing this inner transformational work. Yes. And so I had to recognize some of the, the, the misconceptions I had about myself. For example, I used to have this deep rooted fear of abandonment. Wow. And so that fear of abandonment caused me to play or put on this, what I call Mr. Nice Guy mask. Okay. So I was very codependent. I had this insatiable need for other people's approval. And for a long time, that really drove my life. But again- Can you quickly explain why that is because of what happened with your mom and your sister? Like just quickly, so Anne Marie gets a good understanding. Yeah, so there's a guy named Tim Kelly who wrote an amazing book uh, about purpose. And he says that we all have what's called a sacred wound. Okay. And when we can recognize that sacred wound, it lays the foundation for our entire being. So again, that sacred wound is an experience in which we as human beings make a decision that there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. So for me, my sacred wound occurred when I was six years old. And my mom had to take me to live with my dad, who I didn't know because they had divorced when I was very young. Uh -huh. And so that experience instilled in me this idea that people who love you will leave you. Wow. And so that was my sacred wound. And I was able to heal that wound, move past it. And that's why I'm now no longer carrying or wearing those masks that I talked about earlier. That's really, that's something. And it's wonderful because you understood how it came about and you moved past it. Yes. Wow. That's really beautiful. Well, you've impacted so many people, and you're right. It's not about the money. It's about uh, being a whole person and being able to pay it forward and help other people. That's uh, what it's all about. That's really all there is. You're absolutely right. You should be so proud of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I know that I'm very inspired by you, Michael, and there's not a day that goes by that I, something you said doesn't impact me in some way. So... I thank you for that, and I know that you're short on time tonight, but we both want to thank you so very much for being a part of this, because what Anne-Marie and I are trying to do is to pay it forward to other folks that need the motivation, need the inspiration to create their own success. And again, not just monetary success, but like their global success. Right. Well, again, I'll, I'll be glad to come on your show when we have a little more time. If you want to go a little more in depth to it, I'll be glad to do it. We would love that. Oh. Michael, thank you. Thank you, you are amazing. And uh, keep up the great work. And we'll pass the word about your books. Yes. Uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys a copy. Oh, awesome, Michael. And I'll, I'll be in touch with you soon. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Bye, Michael. Take, take care. Oh, bye. Thank you, everyone. Please don't forget.
subscribe, like this video too, and share. We would be so appreciative. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.